Lost and Gone, you guys see what happens to the, the West Coast lyrical um, genius Rascals. We went to like that. It's rap pugilism when I be placing 208 bones in one zone with microphones. I'm like the Blade Runner hunting clone, Shimon. I beat it like one glove in a bad nose job with more breathing techniques than Lamar's. Raz still be drinking more liquid brews and continue to liquidate the crews with a drunken technique like CD and Kung Fu and Virtual Fighter 2. See me, son, I'm the one sporting Dolce and Gabbana. Pillin' this stuff is weird back like Cradle Cap. You ain't no cap killer for real ass, but who you desire to kill, you need more Godzilla. John R. Austin II, a.k.a. Raz Cass, born September 26, 1973. Becoming a rapper is and has always been one of the more saturated and difficult to break into industries for whoever dare to attempt. On top of that, the career span up. I ain't gonna lie, the first time I discovered um, Raz Cass, I think he was a feature in, um, he was, he was featuring some song, um, uh, with like, he was, he was with some, he was, he was, he was doing a song with somebody named, um, Apollo, Br Apollo Brown, and, um, that, and, and that's the, that's, that's the first time I discovered him, and, and I ain't gonna lie, when I, when I first, like, hear him rap, He's actually nice. He's a nice rapper. He's he's dumb nice. I ain't gonna lie. He got bars, bro. And, and yeah, bro. And I oh, and I also like heard like like and and he got he got into it with the game. He got it he got it on with the game too. Where the game allegedly knocked out supposedly the game was supposedly knocked out. Ras Cash in the club. Are not promised. And almost like running backs in football, short-lived and can be here today, gone tomorrow. The reason that is, is because unlike most corporate jobs, your talent doesn't always matter in this arena. A lot of times, the best rapper can go overlooked for the one who presents himself as more marketable or has better connections, a better personality people may gravitate to, therefore he can sell more, or have a look that the females would eat up and lead to sales as well. Many factors go into becoming an entertainer, specifically becoming a rapper, and most times the nicest MCs are left behind only to be remembered by the ones in the right place, right time, or lucky enough to have had it brought to them at some point. I feel like that about today's feature. I didn't grow up listening to Raz Kaz and honestly never heard his music until around the time this channel started, but when I did, was blown away immediately and couldn't believe it myself. It kind of went like this. Oh, such and such wants me to do a feature on Raz Kaz. Let me check his music out. Types in the name, thinking, fuck is a Raz Kaz. First song comes up, anything goes, clicks it, and immediately the beat captures my attention, being right up my alley. I'm rocking out, listening to each bar, already sold on the cadence and the sound. And then he says, money gets washed, it's only illegal if you get caught. Scrunch's face, now totally aware. Thought you knew, cause the DEA do it too. Keep separate, separate books, books for the, the internal, internal revenue. revenue. I'm, I'm like, like okay, okay, talking, talking that. that. Continues through the hook and, and stops at the line. line. I, I get, get manicures, manicures to keep my cuticles suitable. suitable. Player, Player don't, don't hate, hate me because, because I'm beautiful. beautiful. Right, right there, I had to turn it off and sit back for a second. And after replaying that line a few more times, I got a glimpse of the genius Raz Kaz is, but would be delighted when the second song I clicked on being Nature of the Threat, and that was it. It literally, it literally took, took me years, years to do a feature on him because, because not only did I feel I needed more time to really understand and enjoy his music, but also his career and what could have happened to make this seemingly undeniable MC not blow up in a time like the 90s when his style was arguably at its peak. After research and more enjoying the stories of his career mostly told by himself, I feel for these reasons this West Coast genius was unfortunately forgotten as time went on. What happened? Salute to Twin on IG for this request. It's your boy JC Stunner with music. So take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next.
Raz Kaz is a rapper, songwriter, and record producer from Carson, California, wants to be exact, that grew up a hip-hop fan around the gangbanging in his neighborhood, but never taking part in it, although his rap sheet suggests he had his fair share of run-ins with the law. In 94, he released Remain Anonymous, a promotional single that caught the eye of the Source magazine that featured him in the hip-hop quotable section and led to a deal with Priority Records. His Ethiopian stage name derives from Emperor Johannes IV, and he drew inspiration not just from West Coast artists like Ice Cube and N.W.A., but heavily influenced and intrigued by East Coast artists like Nas, Jay-Z, KRS-One, Rakim, RZA, and the list goes on. With his lyrical ability, he was embraced by the East Coast all the same, and to this day, his wordplay from over 20 years ago still has the same razor-sharp impact it had back then on new listeners. Stunt number one, promotion halted. For anyone familiar with Roscoe's musical journey, you remember his extensive battle with his own label, Priority Records, and how they didn't see eye to eye with the artist. Shoppers nowadays don't see eye to eye with the label. Just, most of them would be wanting to quit, sign off, because sign like off, like that shit. Just want to go independent, bro. Like, wow. He was just trying to be. While he took pride in his lyrical ability and focusing on making the best hip hop track he could, Priority only cared about whether whatever he came up with could sell or not, and rightfully so on both sides. As a rapper, your job is not just to network, make connections, and put out respected hip-hop. You also have to keep in mind, can it sell or not? I think that exact sentence right there is what Razkaz nor his fans ever realized. When 96 came and it was time to prepare an album, he focused heavily on putting out the most lyrically respected record, first with the single Anything Goes, produced and written by Raz himself, that was smooth enough for radio, but not enough to help the MC break into the mainstream side of hip hop. It peaked 20 on the hip hop rap singles, followed by the album title track Soul on Ice, that peaked at 22 on the same charts, and neither managed to push him to the level of his peers that year, like Biggie, Jay Z, and others. Lyrically, the album was nearly flawless and respected in hip hop as one of the best and most pure hip hop pieces of work ever released. The source map. Yo, comment down below if y'all want me like to react to um, a Raskash song, bro. Comment down below. I don't want to react um, if y'all want me to do that, bro. Stylus Magazine agreed to just as much, calling it next level and full of awe and skill. Of his catalog, Soul on Ice is held as by far his most outstanding piece of work. But for whatever reason, the label just couldn't sell the record. He wasn't able to recoup from the budget for the album, and not long after its release, the label discontinued promoting it. Without promotion in those times, the album went forgotten. Stun number two, no Dre, no date. After a disappointing debut that was ultimately shelved by his label, Raz decided to put a lot more into his sophomore album, Rassination. Another dope lyrical record that was also shelved halfway through because it lacks the sales to continue pouring money into it. With its two albums now basically thrown out by the label, because they just couldn't sell it, Razzcast had to come back with something huge on album 3, scheduled for release around 2002. He had no choice but to, seeing what the label did to his first two albums, because he didn't produce a record that could be sold and bring back the money expected. His third album, Golden Child, was his next focus, and the label Priority got hyped. After hearing he had a record produced by Dr. Dre that also had Busta Rhymes on the hook. So, once again, they open the budget, and then he catches a DUI case and has to report to jail in a year and a half. No worries, enough time to complete the album and even promote it a bit before turning himself in. 
Also, the same having a Dr. Dre track featuring Busta Rhymes, also Kanye West and Premier produced tracks, the album would promote itself. According to Raz, this was his lyrical record that would also be able to sell. The label forces his a and to give them a hard drive with the Dr. Dre song, as they wanted to release it and start promoting it, but Raz wanted to hold it back and release it as a second single. So, Priority decided not to release the album altogether. He went up to the office and took the hard drive back, and from there, Priority edited the album, and eventually, Raz Kaz was released. Golden Child would never come out. Stunt number three, failed opportunities. At the, At the end of the day, after reviewing Raz Kaz's career, you realize how many opportunities he had that he let slip through his fingers by either going to jail for too many minute reasons, being his control or out, like the extensive amount of DUIs and tumultuous relationship with his label and not taking advantage of opportunities when they were right in front of him. One of the biggest examples of that was when he linked with Jay-Z to help Jay start his Rockefeller West endeavor, hoping Raz would edit, seeing as he had the lyrical ability and respect among his peers as an MC. He flew Raz to New York to stay with him and work on music, and on one fateful night in the club in 1997, he and Jay were front and center when he began to brew. Raz admits to getting nervous and over-drinking the Hennessy they had laid out. Soon after, Jay... He gets on the mic, spits some bars, and kills it, Raz recalls. He then calls him to the mic, and he says he fumbled his bars because he was too drunk, and Jay never forgave him for that, nor worked. Raz fucked up, nah, he fucked up. If, it, if that's true, then he fucked up. With him again. Likely feeling Raz wasn't prepared for his opportunity. And that was kind of the story of Raz Kaz's career. When opportunity knocked too many times, he wasn't ready to answer. And in those times, that just couldn't fly with so much competition around. All in all, Raz Kaz is one of the dopest MCs lyrically still to this day. He didn't release an album from 98 to 2013, and the ones released thereafter didn't make the noise he hoped. He continues to work on music and continues to be underrated as a lyricist. Super great rapper, but for these reasons, his growth musically was stunning. Salute, much respect, to boy Jesse Stunning with music. So yeah, bro, let me, let me know what y'all think about Raskaz, bro. Like, like I said, like, I heard, like, like, I heard, like, him, like, a song, I, damn, how can I say this? Like, I heard, like, 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 he was featured in a song that I heard of. I think his name with, um, I think his name is Apollo Brown or some shit like that. And I'm not gonna lie, he's nice, bro. But I never heard of, of Raskaz's, like, song, bro. Like, his, his song, bro. Like, he was featured in that song with, with Apollo Brown and shit. So, yeah, bro. But, so, like I said, let me know if y'all want if y'all want me to um listen to a Razzcast song. If y'all want me to react to a Razzcast song. If you're a Razzcast fan, let me know, bro. What is your favorite Razzcast song? Let me know. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, feel me. Y'all know the vibes. Wave your check it out. You are.